Backstory. My brother-in-law is 28 and still lives at home with mother-in-law. He recently had a baby with a friend of mine. Initially, when he found out she was pregnant, he denied paternity and even went as far as faking a paternity test to prove to his family that the child wasn't his. This denial went on for the first few months of the child's life. My husband and I were in contact with the mother of this child and made plans to be in his life, regardless of the actions of brother-in-law. Brother-in-law eventually stepped up after the mother took him to court. He was awarded visitation. He would speak poorly of the mother during his visitation. He would disregard her recommendations about how to best care for this child. He would insinuate that she was crazy. Mother-in-law would agree and make comments of her own. He only changed the first diaper when the child was several months old because, before that, mother-in-law cared for the baby whenever he visited. That was to say that brother-in-law is a real piece of work and mother-in-law enables him. The story. I told my husband how uncomfortable it was for me to watch his mother enable his brother. She was buying all the diapers, clothes, toys, everything. She was the one caring for the baby during his visits. These were times when my friend, the mother of this child, had to be apart from her baby. And they were speaking poorly of her too, while my brother-in-law sat back and got intoxicated during his visits. The audacity. Anyway, my husband and I have a slightly older son, the perfect age for hand-me-downs. After my mother-in-law came to us several times asking for different items, toys, clothes, bottles, I told my husband that I didn't feel good about helping his mother enable his brother to do nothing for his baby. I said I would be fine giving hand-me-downs to the brother but wouldn't agree to give things to mother-in-law anymore. My husband initially agreed that brother-in-law needs to learn how to care for the baby. So the agreement was, we would only give hand-me-downs to brother-in-law and we would tell mother-in-law no when she asked. Fast forward two weeks and my in-laws are coming for an unplanned visit. We live close, this isn't uncommon. While they were on their way over, my husband took a call from mother-in-law and quickly left the room. Red flag. So I asked him about why they were visiting. He made up an excuse and I bought it. After they left, I noticed that some of our unused baby items were missing. When I asked my husband about it, he said, What did you want me to do? She asked for them. I brought up our agreement and told him I was angry that he'd gone against it. He said he forgot. Then he called me controlling and accused me of coming between him and his family. I argued that we agreed because I had a moral issue with enabling. He dismissed me by telling me that I was out of line for being upset. He never acknowledged that he lied to my face or went against our agreement. He only attacked my character. I asked him to move out. So am I the idiot for asking my husband to move out after he gave our son's hand-me-downs to his mother? You know what? Goodwill will always take your hand-me-downs if you want to keep your mother-in-law from having them, or you can give them directly to your friend, the new mother. Why should mother-in-law get the credit for giving the new mother good used baby things? Obviously, there's more going on here than just baby clothes, but you are not the idiot. Why does it matter whether the baby items are handed off to the brother-in-law or the mother-in-law? From the sounds of it, brother-in-law isn't exactly fit to be parenting, so isn't the baby safer being taken care of by mother-in-law anyway? You should be concerned that the baby is getting proper care, not digging in your heels about brother-in-law and refusing to help. Yeah, it sucks that you're watching your friend go through all this and seeing your brother-in-law being a deadbeat dad, but you can't make him change, and you taking this weird stance isn't going to make him change either. You are the idiot here. Exactly, you are the idiot. Withholding completely unneeded items you would donate anyway is not a moral principle, it's called spite. You are helping absolutely no one by withholding the items. Not baby, not mother-in-law, not brother-in-law. Because brother-in-law is a loser and not going to change. He isn't going to suddenly realize the error of his ways and become dad of the year all because of you. You claim to want to help that baby, then get off your high horse and let your husband and his family do their best in a bad situation. Your husband should have kept the boundary with his family, but that isn't a reason to kick him out. Unless you've had problems for a while about other things. Yes, cheating, lying, disrespect. Disregarding agreements we make is a predictable pattern of behavior. He's promised to change hundreds of times. This was the final straw for me. While it sounds like cheating and lying were good enough reasons to kick him out, OP, I hope you're doing okay. I believe you and 100% think if divorce is the best option for you, you should do it. Your husband is still under your mother-in-law's thumb. He immediately caved and ignored your agreement the first time mother-in-law asked for help. This will continue if you don't stand your ground. I've, 31 male, been married to my wife Sage, 30, for six years, and we have two kids together. I'm a chef and I love to cook. 
Still, generally we take turns cooking so neither gets burned out or feels like it's a chore. This is especially helpful when we host others because allergies are significant in both our families. When she was pregnant though, I always cooked for her because the pregnancy wasn't easy for Sage. I wanted her to relax and enjoy food instead of being too tired and sick to eat, which is how she was in the very early stages of her first pregnancy. Everyone knew about it, but Sage's sister Gwen, 34, brought it up an excessive amount. She said she couldn't believe Sage was getting weighted on during her pregnancy and that a dude would do that for his wife. It was a touch annoying how much he brought it up. Now, Gwen is pregnant with her first child, and she called out of the blue after her pregnancy announcement to say I should cook and send meals over for her as I did for Sage. At first, I thought she was trying and failing to be funny, but nope, she was as serious as a heart attack. I told her I wasn't cooking for her and brought up how random and inappropriate it was to ask like that. She told me we're family, and she's pregnant, and I should want her to rest as much as I'd wanted Sage to rest during both of her pregnancies. I told her Sage is my wife, so it's different, and I told her she has a husband to cook for if that's what she wants. She told me her husband would never and that I should try being a good brother-in-law. I told her her brother-in-law doesn't equal spouse. Gwen tried to talk Sage into convincing me, but the two of them were never close, so Sage just rolled her eyes and told her where to go. Even she couldn't believe Gwen was for real. Gwen's reaction to our telling her no was to run to her parents and tell them I refused to help her out. She told them she was struggling and just wanted help. They asked why I couldn't do it occasionally since Gwen's husband is too much of an idiot to do it. I told them it was a lot to ask and we weren't that close to Gwen. When Gwen realized her parents hadn't convinced me or convinced Sage to convince me, she called back up. She said I was an idiot for not helping my family and for rubbing her husband's lack of consideration for her in her face. I'm starting to feel like this will become such a huge deal and now I doubt myself. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot, what the heck? I thought maybe your sister-in-law was visiting and you'd refuse to cook for her for some random reason. But no, she's just mad. She put you down for cooking for your pregnant wife and now she's trying to emotionally blackmail you into doing it for her? Ha ha ha! If I were you, I would send her a recipe book or cook an elaborate meal and send her pictures. Some people's entitlement holds no bounds. This is beyond ridiculous. Also, if her husband is too much of an idiot to care for her wife, why did she decide to have children with him? Also, sounds like she isn't even ill. She just wants you to treat her like you treated her sister. This is so ridiculous that it doesn't make sense. She's out of her mind. Let her lazy husband do it. And if your in-laws want to complain, suggest they do it. I guarantee there will be excuses. I, 33, recently divorced mom, operate an in-home daycare with my sister. For the last few weeks, we've been caring for our infant nephew, our brother's son, with the expectation that my brother will eventually start paying us, including back pay. We've cared for my nephew 14 days so far, about 4 to 7 hours per day. My brother wants me to charge only $25 daily, whereas we usually charge $60 daily. When I made a case that $30 per day is reasonable, he responded, 1. I'm not a client, I'm your brother and he is your nephew. When you and ex-husband were considering selling your home, I was going to do a 1% commission instead of 3% because your family, which roughly would have been about a $8,500 pay cut. This was never discussed. 2. I paid hundreds for daycare and I have no problem doing it again. The difference is that I know 100% that I can always take my son there. With him going to you all, we have to figure out a solution using leave hours any time the house is down with sickness or you all go on vacation. 3. I'm compensating based on the amount of work you have to do for the three or four hours he's there. Actually, hourly, it's more than compensating. It's not my fault you chose a route where you don't make a lot of money, but that damn sure doesn't make it my responsibility to make up for it. 4. Your mindset is a little twisted. You have the opportunity to see and build a relationship with your nephew and get paid for it separately, so we don't count towards your attendance. That is either $400 or $450 a month for seeing your nephew, or if you want to be petty, it can easily be $0. 5. You all are the ones who said over and over again you wanted to see nephew more often and wished you would go there. I'm not by any means strapped for money where I can't easily put him back in daycare full time, but you all wanted to watch him and I knew it would bring some extra money your way simultaneously, so it should be a win-win. Where you've messed it up is you think I need to take him there and you want to talk like he's just another kid or I'm just another client. I'm not the one to be getting into a back and forth with. If you want the money every month to see your nephew, then you need to check yourself or I'll keep him the rest of this week and he'll start somewhere else next week. 
I'm not here to play you're hurting my feelings games. Let me know, but this isn't a back and forth. I thought it was a good way for him to spend time with his family and to put some money in your pocket. If it's a problem already, just say so and I'll gladly make other arrangements. After that, I responded that I thought his message was entitled and disrespectful. I think we shouldn't continue a business relationship. My brother says I'm entitled, my mindset is twisted, and I should say less. Am I the idiot? If you want the money to see your nephew every month, you need to check yourself. Not only would I say no to babysitting for your brother, but I'd also go low or no contact for a while for your own sanity after this BS statement. This is a service, a service where you charge $60. You're already giving him a $30 a day family discount. Not the idiot, he can kick rocks. Yeah, she already gave him a 50% discount. This is what he's missing. He's not paying close to what the other families pay, and he still wants to barter like he's buying fruit at an outdoor market. Not to mention, OP is a single parent, and their sister runs the daycare. The brother is taking money away which his nieces and nephews need to survive. You're doing him a favor, not the other way around. I love that he's tried to flip that on you. Here, I'll do you a favor. Look after my child instead of a kid who pays the full amount and relishes the time he's graciously allowed you with your nephew. Well, screw that. You did the right thing. If he has so much money, then he can pay the full amount for daycare. I don't know why he fails to realize whether it's in your home or not. You're running a daycare. He made his bed, now he can lie in it. My wife has trouble understanding when I give her an answer. I'll give the example that drives me the most nuts. She'll ask me in the middle of the afternoon if I'd like a snack. If I say yes, then she'll make a snack or tell me that she would like to go get something. However, if I say no, she won't just make herself something or go get something for herself. She'll ask me if I'm sure. I am. She will then give me a list of things we could eat. I still don't want anything. Then she'll check again. Nope, still not hungry. Then she'll go to the fridge and start listing random stuff we could eat. I'm not interested. I told her that she could just eat something by herself. I told her that she could go get something by herself. I offered to make her a snack. I offered to order in. I offered to go out with her so she wouldn't sit somewhere by herself. None of those is a good enough response. Then she'll go back to check if I'm sure I don't want anything. By this point, I'm done, and I tell her very clearly that I'm not interested and that this is the last time I'm going to answer politely. And this is when she says I don't need to be aggressive about answering a simple question. I swear it takes all my self-restraint not to lose it on her. But she still complains about me being so aggressive. It's becoming a real problem. I don't think that warning her that I'm done being polite is aggressive. I think I'm frustrated that she won't accept no as easily as she will yes. She still tells me that I'm being an idiot when I react so aggressively. Not the idiot, but start counting. Honey, this will be the second time I've said no. This is the third time I'm going to give you the same answer. No. Do you want to hear the same answer for a fourth time? This is my fifth no in under five minutes. Let's talk about why you aren't understanding no. On the sixth time, break into an interpretive dance. On the seventh time, hand her a piece of paper with no written down. On the eighth time, tell her you're just going to start answering in Spanish. No. Or, recognize you have a very insecure wife and take her to a therapist. Option B sounds significantly more responsible, but option A is appealing. Think of all the entertainment. My mother does this, and it's infuriating. My seven-year-old nephew will just say, asked and answered, to anyone who repeats questions to him. Sometimes he's a bit rude about it, but I cheer on the inside when he says this to my mom because I never felt able to be so direct until I was at least 30. OP, your wife shows signs of disordered eating. She needs you to eat so she can give herself permission to eat. She can't justify eating unless someone else is eating as well. She's pushing so hard because she's hungry and for some reason, She's not able to articulate any of this on her own. Maybe she hasn't even realized yet that that's what she's doing. I would suggest couples counseling it before it turns into resentment. My sister has no contact with our parents. To make a very long story short, she needed a loan, 50,000, and did a deal with our parents. She then refused to pay it back. Then our parents got into some issues where they need the money. They sued my sister for the cash and won. She pays back an amount each month to them. She went no contact after that whole situation. Personally, I'm on my parents' side since my sister really screwed them over and it wouldn't have happened if she tried to pay them back at all. So I'm still in contact with her and we always connect at family events. I bought a house and am having dinner with all the family. Everyone was invited, including my parents and sister. 
They were both informed and my parents had no issue with it. My sister, on the other hand, was angry. We got into an argument and she wanted them to be uninvited from my events. I had enough and told her she could either suck it up and go or not go, but our parents will never be uninvited. She called me an idiot and hasn't talked to me since. So, am I the idiot in this situation? Edit, she believes they should have helped her without a loan and that it's unfair that they did this since the other siblings have gotten help for free before. My brother and I have asked for money before, but it was nowhere near the amount she needed. The most I've ever asked for was my rent cost and my brother was like $3,000. Not the idiot. She might have a point if the other siblings had gotten $50,000, no strings attached, but $3,000? I'm not sure how anyone could twist their mind into a pretzel to think you're somehow the idiot in this situation. Yeesh, I'm sorry you're having to deal with this. Why wouldn't you invite your parents? Your sister tried to screw them over, not the other way around. Your sister did this to herself. She agreed on an amount of money that's a year's salary for some people with no intention of paying it back. She doesn't want to contact your parents, maybe because she feels guilty or because she thinks if she plays victim long enough, she'll get her way, but you dealt it the right way. Give her the option to show up, but if she refuses, it's her fault.